Wellness for Life is brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Gottenberg Chiropractic Clinic, and Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership. Hello, I'm Matthew Koffenberg, physical therapist and owner of Purim Physical Therapy. Today we're going to continue our series on treating your own back. This series has been specific for people who have either acute low back pain or chronic low back pain, meaning pain that's been lingering for a long time. And I've just been talking about a plan or a program that you can do at home, empower yourself to try to help control uh, that back pain. Um, today we're going to talk about these specific exercises that you should do. Now what's interesting is that these exercises are so simple. Um, and they're just so easy to do. They require no equipment. Um, they require very little time um, and anyone and everyone can do it. So a couple of things that you should think about um, prior to just jumping right in uh, to this exercise program. So just some considerations for the maximum benefit of this program, you really do need to stop all other exercises that you're doing. You know, whether it, whatever it be, whatever it is, whether it's running, um, whatever you are doing for exercises, you really just need to stop them. Focus on this program until you're pain free. Um, you also need to, after you are pain free, you need to always consider posture then. Last episode we talked about posture and how we can correct our posture. So you really, really need to zoom in on that and focus in on that postural correction and that postural awareness piece. Um, these exercises also, they are, they're not designed to strengthen your back. They're purely designed to rid you of your pain. So at, at some point, um, after your pain is gone, you will need to um, start doing some stomach strengthening or some low back strengthening because these exercises are not specifically designed to do that. These exercises are specifically designed to change uh, what your disc is doing and ultimately ridding you of pain. A couple other things to consider. The first few movements that you do might be painful. That's fairly normal. What should happen though is the more you do, the more repetitive you get with these exercises, the pain should always lessen. Um, so just be aware that the symptoms initially might actually go up, um, specifically right in the low back. So don't be too alarmed by that. This is beneficial for any age. It's beneficial for acute pain, for that pain where you might have bent down and all of a sudden you've got this stabbing pain, or it's going to be beneficial for those people who've had pain for years. Um, if the pain is so intense that you can hardly move, that it's very difficult to get up, up out of bed, it's very difficult to get out of a chair, just use, use caution with this program. You can do it, but you just need to use um, extreme caution with this. Uh, if if after 24 hours, so let's say you've begun this program and after 24 hours of beginning this, your pain is significantly worse or the pain is moving away from your spine, meaning like it's going down your leg, you need to immediately stop and contact your doctor or contact your physical therapist. Um, there are seven exercises in this program. Again, they're very simple to do. Um, there are the first four exercises are, called, are, are extension type exercises. What that means is our spine is going to be moving backwards. The last three exercises are what we call flexion exercises where the spine is moving forward. It is very important that you do this exercise program in the order that I present it. You will always do extension first. You'll, for most cases, you'll do only extension for about two to three weeks. Then you'll start to gradually move into the flexion exercises. You will know if this program is working if your pain centralizes, meaning the pain is coming in closer to your back, not moving away from your back. If the pain is moving away from your back, these exercises are not working and you need to contact um, your doctor. So what are the exercises um, that we're going to do? Again, there are seven of them. The very first one that you do is you just lie flat on your stomach. Um, Oftentimes you actually need to stick a pillow underneath your pelvis and just lie flat on your stomach for two or three minutes. Typically you want to do that about six times every day. Uh, after you've been on your stomach for about two or three minutes, you then want to prop yourself up onto your elbows. Very simply, just put yourself up onto your elbows, still on your stomach, and you hang out in that position for about two or three minutes. After that, you do what we call a prone press-up. 
Um, I often call it a sloppy push-up. You do a push-up motion, but you keep your hips on the floor or on the bed. Off, usually I recommend that people do 10 of those. You go very slowly. You want to take deep breaths. When you're way up at the top, you want to make sure that you breathe out and let your back sag. Every movement you do, you want to get higher and higher and higher. You usually do that about six to eight times during the day as well. The final extension exercise is a standing extension exercise. Um, with the picture that you're seeing, the only problem with the picture is that that person is not necessarily leading with their head. You'll notice that his head is kind of staying forward. When you actually do an extension standing, you want to make sure that you are leaning back with your head. That will ensure proper mechanics. So usually after about two to four weeks, pain has really subsided, then you can start doing your flexion exercises. And the flexion exercises are all designed to mobilize the scar. Anytime there's pain, there's going to be some scar tissue. You want to make sure that scar is moving properly. So we then move people into flexion type exercises. They're very simple. You always start lying on your back. Bring your knees up towards your chest. Do that for about a week. Keep doing all of the exercises before that. Always continue your extension exercises. Then after you've been doing a week of knee to chest, then you can do it seated. Now the picture is showing it on a very specific exercise ball. You don't need that ball. You can do it on a chair. You just bend forward and hold that position. You're not holding these positions for a long time. The flexion exercises you're holding for about five seconds and you're only doing about six of them. The final flexion exercise that you can do is standing. Now you won't do standing exercises until you've done about a month of lying flat flexion and about two weeks of seated flexion. The other very important thing to do after you flex, after you do the flexion exercises, always follow up with the sloppy push-up or that prone press-up. Critical that you, your last exercise is extension. This program will work. You have to have patience with it, um, but it, it'll definitely work. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me at 218-346-2464. Thank you for watching Wellness for Life. Brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Gottenberg Chiropractic Clinic, Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership, and Natural Alternatives.